Hey there, welcome to or welcome back to No Pants Profits and welcome to day five. They're gonna call it day six. I'm gonna call it day five of the um, Croatia and Albania escape. We've still not left Croatia, but that's coming tomorrow. Uh, we are at a hotel that's literally overlooking the sea right here. Five star hotel. So cheap this time of year, it's 124 euro a night. Um, which is what you'll pay for like uh, a Drury Inn in, in Texas this time of year. Um, and I got breakfast and I finally got a custom omelet main. I've got some things like that. And I learned today that muesli just means cereal. All right? Well, because I got, when I'm 100% sure, the Cocoa Puffs. And they called it chocolate muesli. Yeah. yeah. Those are Cocoa Puffs. I go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So today, we are going to explore Dubrovnik. And today we also have our first optional excursion. I'm gonna let you know when that, when that is, how much it costs and everything like that when we get around to the optional excursion. But for now, I shall finish my prosciutto. Yes, these restaurants seem to have prosciutto for breakfast. Very expensive thing to get the States. Here, here prosciutto is like candy. Although Parmigiano Reggiana is a little bit harder to find than prosciutto. But I found some Parmigiano Reggiana because there's a lot of Italian roots here. Even though tonight, the star today, the stars at night or big and bright, bu 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 deep in the heart of Texas. Yes, I'm wearing my Texas shirt if you follow this channel. From um, my time on the carnival. God, what's the name of that? Celebration. Uh, I, I want to say Celebration Mardi Gras. I'm forgetting the name of the damn ship. I know the celebration of the Mardi Gras. Jubilee. Sorry, I was unlocking my phone. So um, join along with us as we explore the city of Dubrovnik, and then we're gonna do an optional excursion to the southernmost point in Croatia. I've gotta get my breakfast inside of me in the next five minutes and get out to the bus. So here's a uh, kind of fun fact. Uh, you can see there's a bus going in front of us, but uh, the Globus bus is right behind there. If we're gonna see it, uh, they have to pay 200 euros just to drop off a bus filled with tourists in the old town. It's there, the, the Globus bus is going away. 200 euros to drop off and pick up guests in the old town. We're gonna go ahead and we are going to do a tour now of the old town. I was here last night, not much here, but it's empty this time of year. I can't believe there's even another bus here. But yeah, that's a 200 euro permit just to drop off. It's kind of, sort of crazy. But uh, let's uh, see what's going on with the tour of the old town of Dubrovnik. So today is actually the uh, leap year day. It's the day that only exists every four years and we got lucky because tomorrow is when tourist season starts. There's something called the Dubrovnik Pass and during the slow season, it's 15 euro. And since it's still February today, it's 15 euro. For 15 euro, that includes all the uh, bus transportation, that includes the walls, that includes a bunch of museums and stuff like that. Uh, one is closed every day this time of year uh, from the museum side, but the walls are open every day. The walls alone are 15 euros. And then mystically, magically, from March to October, that pops up to 35 euros. So we're definitely taking advantage of that 15 euro pass today. Uh, you buy it, it's good for 24 hours. You can buy it on your phone. You can buy a physical ticket as well. Um, this is somewhere I already was last night, but this is the entrance of the city. This is uh, where, where they filmed a lot of Game of Thrones. Now I've watched the first uh, 10 minutes of Game of Thrones and the last episode of Game of Thrones. So don't ask me what they actually filmed here because I'm not a Game of Thrones watcher. But if you are, this might seem very, very familiar. Yeah, you actually see that uh, Dubrovnik Pass is advertised right there. Only, let me see if I can show you. Only 15 euro. There you go. Yeah, so it's advertised there as uh, only 15 euro from the winter, from November to February, and then everything shoots up in price. Welcome to supply and demand. So yeah, you can get that online at the QR code, or you can get it at a bunch of shops. The bus station sells it and stuff like that. So definitely, uh, if you're here in February, save yourself more than half 
more than half on visiting the attractions. So one of the cool things we learned is they've got these fountains all over the city that uh, distribute out water. Uh, they're there from the ancient times when there was actually an aqueduct right up there. But the fountains still work to this day and supposedly this water is potable and drinkable. Let me just get a little water. Really need two hands to do this one. Let's see. Okay, let's see. There we go. It's actually uh, pretty good, pretty fresh water. I'm hoping uh, Montezuma's revenge doesn't take over anytime soon. But you see, these guys here are actually fixing the fountain because the fountain's kind of walled off. So. They're bringing the area back around. Uh, this is the last day of February, so by you know mid-March, they're hoping that this will be up and running. But uh, I don't think so. <laughs> looks a, looks a little bit behind there, but you can see that's actually a fountain that was fed by the aqueduct, but now it's fed by the lake. They pump it into this uh, fountain right here. Pretty cool. And they're supposed to couple fountains all over the city. Any part you like, you can make a wish. Oh, <laughs> writer still today. He used to write things showing the relationship between government and ordinary people. You can imagine 500 years ago, it was a little bit crazy. Uh, he must have been very brave to say something against, against government. Okay, he stayed alive, but uh, at a certain point, uh, the government expelled him from the city. They didn't allow him to come back. Uh, he lived in Italy and he died in Italy, but uh, people liked his sketches, dialogues, which were happening here in the city. Even today, his plays are performed during the Roman Summit Festival, and in literature, uh, people and the students uh, uh, in schools, they are similar. We are here at, um, I don't know, palace. some the, the palace, the, the Doge, Doge, Doge Palace, I think. Uh, and it's kind of weird because, uh, you know, we stop for a bathroom break. All the men are done in like 45 seconds and all the women take two hours. No, I'm just kidding. I got women on both sides of me giving me dagger eyes saying don't do that. But yeah, so we're, we're in this little palace right here. And we're going to tour it. But yeah, there's, there's still like 10, 10 minutes later there's still ladies going to the bathroom. So yeah, we've got our included tour this morning that should last, I think probably when we finish here, we'll be nearly done till about 10.30. Then we've got a couple hours on our own and the Dubrovnik, Dubrovnik Pass seems to be the way to go for 15 euro, kind of gets you everything. So uh, we'll, we'll speed run the Dubrovnik Pass and then head out for our optional excursion this afternoon. But I'll bring you some more of this palace in just a few moments. This is pretty cool. We're in the uh, rector's palace, and this is how they used to get the nobility around back in the day. They basically just put some uh, wooden, uh, wooden like two by fours there, and they'd carry them around in these things, which had curtains on them, so you could or couldn't see them. That's uh, that's something I've really truly never seen before. Um, and you see, there's another one here that doesn't have the curtains on it, but they've got three or four of these that are just how, pretty much just how that, uh, how the royalty would get around down here back in the day. These ornately decorated and four people would carry them. They're kind of, they're kind of like caskets for living people. Yeah, they're just like caskets for living people. There's another one here. Kind of creepy, that's all I'm gonna say. Kind of creepy. Two million people, it's not easy to. You're not so powerful, you can be on your own, you always depend on someone else. But uh, for the last uh, 2013, Croatia has been a member of the European community. Euro entered from the last year as a national currency. Some things, some infrastructures around Croatia have been done by the money from the European, European community. 
Uh, for example, here you see fish on the Zilan chair. That means that wow. the family, there is always Kotoman on uh, Kotoman, and that means that this family was uh, involved in fishing. Okay, that no was gosh. their occupation. The most precious item is this one here, Fortepiano. It was built in Austria this time, not in Italy, in a school of famous master from Vienna. Uh, in his school, similar used to be made for Mozart. Concerts are still held on this one, exactly in this room. It can't be moved because of the fragile legs, etc. There are some rules, etc. From time to time in this room, or a few people, uh, so there is a concert just uh, uh, on this. So now we have a left outside of the city walls, and this is actually the marina here. So we've got the marina here. This is right outside of the city walls. So you can see, uh, and we're going to go back in the walls and explore a bit, but the uh, the, the city tour itself has pretty much ended the included tour of the day. So we've got time, uh, we've got two hours till the bus takes us back, but there's there's a city bus, or you can Uber back for like five euros, so it's two euros for the city bus, or five euros to take the uh, to take the Uber back, and then at 3.30, so right now it's 10.30ish? Yeah, 10.16, uh, so it's 10.30ish. Or, or 10 16. Uh, we've got until 12 30 here uh, then the bus is going to take us back to the hotel and then at 3 30 3 30 p.m we are going to be heading for it says lunch but it's actually a dinner uh, to the southern most point in um, in Croatia let me give you the name of it uh, Konval Valley lunch and liquor tasting so uh, that's what we're going to be doing this afternoon but before that, and I'm going to do this in the same video um, because this is kind of free time intentionally, um, we're going to go ahead and explore some of the museums and the walls and stuff like that uh, throughout the city of Dubrovnik. Hey there, welcome to or welcome back to No Fans Profits. My name's Richard and today I'm going to talk to you about the Dubrovnik Pass. The Dubrovnik Pass, well, <laughs> from November to February is 15 euro and for the cost that it takes to walk just around the walls, it gets you public transit and so much more. So I think we're gonna start by taking a walk around the city walls. So join me as we do, maybe we'll do the whole hour walk, maybe we'll exit early, but we gotta check in here real quick. And uh, I wish I could help just fresh and maintain the walls. We're gonna walk the Dubrovnik city walls. So I am currently up on the city walls of Dubrovnik. I got a uh, 360 camera recording the walk around. So, you know, if you want to revisit it in 360, you totally can. Will I survive this one hour walk? No one knows. That's the fun part. Stairs up, stairs down. There's some ancient aqueducts over here there's a lot of stairs a lot of stairs both up and down as we go around the city walls that's a pretty pretty look at the city here in Dubrovnik we're above the fortress this is one of the few places that you can actually walk the walls of one of these ancient cities in the world. Like I said, the Dubrovnik Pass, very useful this, because uh, in the off season, which it's only the off season today because of leap year, uh, but in the off season, uh, the pass is 15 euros, gets you the walls, gets you public transit, gets you other museums and stuff like that, or you can pay just 15 for the walls. And then we go back up, whoop, and that, Looks like a time. The good news is I've got hours to take my own pace. If you want to see the whole walk, definitely check out the 360 walk I'm doing of the walls. It'll also be 
on this channel. I'll see if I find something interesting. These stairs don't look too fun. That's all I'm saying. I am getting my workout for the day on this wall walk. Woo! But very pretty views from up above. That's all I can say. Ugh. So I went up all those stairs, which means now I've got to go down the stairs. I'm just hoping I don't have to go upstairs again. Again, this runs in a one-way loop. So you go one way all the way around. We were just up at the ocean facing side. I'll have to see if it uh, comes down again. But yeah, I have this giant stick. I'm really getting an arm workout in because I got to hold the stick up. Listen until I go through there. Okay. So these city walls are not nearly as uh, tall as the other ones. But yeah, this, it's still circled. Hey, look, someone's got a football field down there. Football, soccer, basketball. It looks like they're surveying it right now. For some reason, maybe they're selling it, renting it, taking pictures for an Airbnb. Not sure, but they're definitely down there surveying that right now. Again, we, we've come quite a bit lower. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that doesn't mean I have to go up again, but something tells me there's more stairs up. But yeah, there's the uh, Adriatic Sea, part of the Mediterranean, and you will never see the wall this empty. I don't think there's anyone behind me, anyone in front of me. This is an absolutely empty wall. On the last day, which it happens to be a leap year today, the last day of the um, last day of the leap of, 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 of February, and then the price tomorrow goes from 15 euros up to 35 euros to walk these walls. You can see people clamoring at the door to do it for less than half the price. Okay, I don't, I don't see any more stairs up, so that's good. But you never know. There, the stairs are pretty, uh, pretty sketch. And then you've got a big path. I can't imagine this path just filled with tourists in the on season. And it's not that cold. Look, I'm, I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt, no jacket, nothing like that. Pretty simple. So I went down a bunch of steps and now I have a choice whether I want to exit or I want to continue on the walls. I think I've seen enough. Yeah, I think I've seen enough. So. I think I'm going to, oh, oh there's like a Morning. continuation coming down. That's me. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Let's finish it. I think we might have to go way up there, though. That's what I'm fearing. So. Will we get off the bus? Yeah. Let's see. Oof. Yeah, I guess we're going to walk these city walls because it's only 11.15. Sorry, I had to pan down to see my watch. I got a 360 camera in the other hand. We got the harbor right there. Pretty cool. I'm gonna to attempt to conquer the whole city walls. I said there's three exits. And if we passed one, we got one more chance to chicken out on the city wall. But for now, it's pretty level. I just feel like I'm gonna to have to go way up there, which I'm not looking forward to, but I do have a margarita in my bag, should that happen. Just past the uh, third and final exit, so since it's one way, I guess we gotta finish it now. This seems to be the big tower. We're gonna go up it, and we're gonna have to go down it. Because uh, as Miley says, it's the climb. Whew. Rough climb, rough climb. Whew. I can see why they don't include this on the tour. Most people, including myself, it's a lot of physical activity here. Whew. And the steps are a little slippery. Whew. I think we're getting near the end. I see the fire station. Come on, hope it's near the end. Hey, look, my fat self 
made it all the way to the top of the city. So we started with those waves down there, made it all the way, didn't take too long, but it's time to celebrate. So huh, that is not, not a very flat path. Oh. Let's see if I can get this to stand. I mean, who expects these hundreds of year old surfaces to stand? Uh, all right. So I made it all the way to the top of Dubrovnik. There's where we started. A lot of stairs. There's a basketball court. But it's time to celebrate. I got a mojito. Hey, that came off first shot. Goddamn. That's a strong mojito. It says it's 4.7%. Oh, I say it's strong. Cheers to myself for making it to the top of the wall <coughs> and finishing my mojito. That's all I'm gonna say. Whew. I made it on top of the wall. King of the castle, Mojito is gone. Yay. Maybe I survived, I think. Oops, Mojito. Yeah, so I'm gonna pick up my trash here. Uh, I don't like to pollute. I got my Mojito lid, put it in the trash. My Mojito, put it in the trash. That's called thinking ahead. I didn't think it had enough to have a bottle opener, but guess what? That, that little ledge there, that worked. Now, whew, I'm gonna go find some lunch. Because good God, uh, let me just tell you how, that was, uh, it's 23 flights of stairs. Whew, and that's just the up. The down don't count. So, uh, the down is, more dangerous, especially right here. It's from the turret at the top. I'm actually gonna take a photo or two up here because ain't nobody gonna believe I ever got up here. I'll be back with you in a moment. About an hour later, we come to my favorite part of the wall. Islazas. It's the exit. One way. But thank God, it's the exit. It's got to, my God. Looks like a damn waterfall down, but at least it's down and not up. Uh, 20, we, we've just gone down since the last time I saw you, so 23 or 28 flights of stairs. I can't even keep track anymore. Whew. And my legs feel like jello. I'm not used to this many stairs. Unless I'm wearing a cowboy hat, then I get a lot of stairs in my Texas shirt. But, um, yeah, Oof, this is something you can do in your free time on this Globus tour right here. And just go right up the walls. And we're exiting out now at the, uh, at the entrance to the city. And we're back right where we began with the ticket checking dude right here he's actually down at the bottom now he's down having a cigarette so he's hanging at the bottom those stairs and my legs we ain't cooperating too much i think i might need another mojito but i know for sure i'm gonna feel this in the morning remember you're best off doing it with the the broken class oh my god finally it's sunny as hell because uh, 15 euro gets you this and a bunch of other museums in Boston. Oh, it's the Asian delegation. But right now, I'm gonna find me some lunch because that was quite a workout. Lunch time. I'd like shawarma. It's open. Let's see. So I'm not gonna lie. I had to go like six places before I found one that was open, but I did get my shawarma. Unfortunately, it's not like lamb or anything. It's just chicken. But, that's pretty good. Mm. 
No. Well, that's some pretty damn good shawarma there. I can't complain. Oh, here's the beer factory. Nobody came by this last night. If you watched the video last night. Um, I think I'm gonna go check out the Natural History Museum because it's on my pass. Uh, then maybe go have a drink on the wall. But I'll take you along for all of it, regardless of what I do. All right, so next up, this was included on that Dubrovnik Pass, which includes the buses and includes the walls and everything like that. This is the Dubrovnik Natural History Museum. So, I'm not sure how big it is or anything like that. But we have, I think that's the entrance. Yeah. So we're going to check out the Dubrovnik Natural History Museum and see what they have to offer. I'm going to do a little intro because if it's good enough, I'll make a separate video for it. So we'll see. So you'll hear a new intro after this, but just ignore it. If it's terrible, I won't use it. Hey there, welcome to or welcome back to No Pants Profits. My name's Richard and today I'm at the Prodovsky Museo del Dubrovnik. This is the Dubrovnik National History, nat not natural, not national, natural history museum. Now this is included with the Dubrovnik Pass and the Dubrovnik Pass is pretty much, well the Dubrovnik Pass is the cost that it is to walk the walls, uh, which is the attraction to do in Dubrovnik. So for the cost it is to walk the walls, you can, um, you can walk the walls, plus have pu public transit, plus visit the Natural History Museum. I will tell you that for some reason there's otters all over. So I think I come in here when I get my ticket. This is where you get your ticket, right? Is in here? All right, so you get your ticket in here and I'll be right back. All right, so let's see what's going on. The guy said three floors up. I said, good God, if I haven't done enough stairs already. I just hit the walls. Uh, I guess this is uh, Anton Drobak. We've got kind of a interactive elements here. Throwback prepared medicines for ship's medicine cabinets. Interesting. And we got Baldo Kosik. Wow. So I think here's where we start. Ooh, animals. That's a creepy ass looking cat. What is that? Nightmare fuel, that's what it is. We got a normal can. So it's like the uh, Museum of Natural History in New York, but on a much smaller budget. Got some birds. I don't assume they're gonna have a bald eagle, because that's an America thing. Owls, owls, owls. next animal. Nobody likes this next animal. What is it? It's the seagull. That's a giant freaking seagull. That had to have a lot of french fries. And then we got crows. These are giant crows. Or maybe you just don't realize just how big they are. And then we have a room of teeth and a giant seashell. Now she sells seashells by the seashore. Another seashell. I'm not going to pick it up and see if the sea is calling. Because I'm not answering it royally. Got a lot of coral. More coral and coral and coral. And a butterfly room. Oh. Or la putitera. So we got a butterfly room. Lots of butterflies, actually. I like that one. It's big. It has an interesting pattern. 
It's like me in my shirt, wearing a Hawaiian Texas shirt. Uh, because why? Because I am. What about the flies? And now we continue up. We'll wait for the people coming down the stairs. And now we continue up. He said it goes up three floors. I haven't seen the otters yet. I don't think they're alive. I think everything here is dead because it's history. And there's the quarter chairs and the quarter table. Because of course there is. And we've got the Dubrovnik National Science Institution. Ooh. National History Department, okay. Learn about some film, oh my God. That is a mecha turtle. And that is a scary shark. That's a tiny baby little gray white shark. Tuna, 350 kilograms. God damn. That seems like the actual fish. I don't know how to get fresh that long. We got the first recorded specimen of a silver cheeked toadfish. That's it. That's one ugly fish. Oh, look. You know, I haven't gone out late in uh, Croatia yet, but if you wanted to go clubbing, there's something for you to go clubbing with. Yeah. Has my seal of approval. Oh, good God, that's nightmare fuel. Oh, I don't know if I want to show you this. Yeah, why not? Is it 3D? Yeah, it is. And there's a Frederick Mercury as a fish. You know, people always intrinsically say, would you rather have a mermaid with the top part be a fish and the bottom part be a woman, or the bottom part be a fish and the top part be a woman? I'm always going top part woman. I'm always going top part woman. I'm sorry. Uh, that's just a fact. Uh, what is this? It looks almost like 3D printed. Um, biology, ecology. Flower basket, most beautiful, all the products of nature. Yeah, all I know is you done put some real creepy shit here with this lady. Look, what's this? Let's do a short. So I'm in Dubrovnik and there's some real creepy stuff. Look, there's like a lady fish. People always go, would you rather have the body the bottom part be a woman, the top part be a fish, or the top part be a woman, the bottom part be a fish. This is what happens when you get the top part a fish. Also, you know, not to leave the ladies out, there's Freddie Fishkery. I think that's supposed to be Freddie Mercury. But that's just, that's nightmare fuel right there. And uh, that's even more nightmare fuel right there. You want the top part to be a fish. No, the top part to be a person, and the bottom part to be a fish. That's the only way to do that tricky ass mermaid question. Oh my. Yeah. This is a creepy room. Ooh. Oh wow. There's a whole thing dedicated to Queen. These are compact discs. Someone must have gotten a lot, a lot of AOL CDs. That's all I'm saying. Oh, can we go in this room? Ooh. It's a fish disco. Also known as a fish go. And for some reason, there's a couple CDs on the ceiling. You see there's two CDs taped to the ceiling. But for some reason, a whole bunch of CDs everywhere. Hey, look, uh, someone uh, found their AOL CDs, or at least 
I think they're trying to be CDs from, uh, from what's his name, from Queen, because uh, some of them say under pressure. This is in the Natural History Museum of Dubrovnik. And for some reason, yeah, the whole thing is uh, it's about under pressure and fish being men and men being fish and all of a sudden a viper fish. I guess this is for what happens in the deep ocean. It's under pressure and they're really just going with the whole Freddy, Freddy Mercury motif for Queen and under pressure. It's a lot of it creepy. That's all I'm gonna say. Not a little bit, but a lot of it creepy. Dum, boom, 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 boom. Under pressure. All right. I think we have uh, one more floor to go. What is this? These are like coffee mugs that are taped here. Or they're, they're fishing lined there. Weird. One more floor? Oh, I think one more floor, but it looks like it goes another. Andurja Lessinger. Well, we've got our record player. No, we need to go more floors up. Oh, they're trying to kill me here. I feel like I'm walking the wall again. Diversity, I think. Diversica. Oh look, delicious birds for eating. I understand the chicken. I even understand the goat. Hey, that's a fountain that's in the city from earlier today, and a church that's in the city from earlier today. But some of these things, I'm like, Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh. You see all these different animals, but they advertise all over the city the famous otter. And there it is. You ought to know him by now. You, you ought to know him by now. There he is. Famous otter. Ought to know him by now. Uh, for some reason, he's just like advertised all over the city. It's like a children's book that teaches about animals. And for some reason, a whole floor of the museum is dedicated to this children's book that teaches about animals. All right. That guy said. The guy said there were only three floors, but you know, there's always like a ground floor. Though. Yeah, 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 there's a rope. We can't get up there. So that's a look at the uh, Dubrovnik Museum of Natural History. Hey, look, it's included in the Dubrovnik Pass, if you're going to get it. It's not really going to cost you any more than just climbing the walls. And yeah, you can come see this guy, the creepy. <laughs> A little rodent. I'd say, hey, if you're in the area and you got time, it's worth checking out. You've seen me do it in real time. This has been about 12 minutes total that I've been in here and uh, I'm good. I wouldn't pay for the ticket separately, but hey, if you got it in your pass, why not go check it out? This is Richard from No Pants Profits coming to you from the Dubrovnik Museum of Natural History, reminding you that when you wear no pants, the only thing you have left to lose it's your shirt and that creepy little otter dude. That's all I ought to say. See you soon. All right, so we've got some random cats here. I've got some uh, fried fish. I'm here with some friends from the, oh, oh, they like me now. She's like, yes. You're not gonna eat it out of my hand? You just want me to drop it? Okay. Sardines. Sardines. Now she got some food. So the other ones are going to want some food. There's no don't feed the cats sign. It's just, it's kind of funny because the first time I came here, it's like, oh, every restaurant's a Chinese restaurant. You know, it's like because they all have the lanterns out front. Every restaurant looks like a Chinese restaurant, doesn't it? But that's how they're not allowed to have banners or billboards. So they advertise with these uh, 
Oh, these lanterns. Oh. So every little Look lantern. Hello, kitty cat. Hello. Look, kitty cat. Hi. I don't even like kitty cats, but you're okay. You're okay for now. You're okay. Yeah. The kitty cat likes the sardines. You like yeah. the sardines, huh? Expensive. I'm sorry. But when I... Yeah. They like the sardines. All right. So there's only one more place I wanted to check out in Dubrovnik before I left Dubrovnik. And it's a place that's outside of the city walls. It's called Buzabar. It's cash only and they have a handicap ramp. Yeah, I don't know about that. So let's talk about this. So there's a really cool hidden bar in Dubrovnik right outside the city walls. It's cash only and it's called Booza Bar. Holy crap. That's really cool. Look at that. You go right outside the city walls. It's a cash only bar right here called the Booza Bar. Wow. That's a really awesome looking bar that just overlooks the ocean, not built up or anything like that. No commercialization. It's really quite cool. So I'm going to grab a beer here and enjoy the ocean for a few minutes. Pretty awesome looking place, literally right on the outside of the city walls of Dubrovnik, where I was earlier today. It's kind of funny, full circle, how you go from the top of the walls to down where people would attack the city, at least back in the day at the Booza Wall. Colorful drinks with the most beautiful view. Let's go have a, oh, let's go have a colorful drink with a view. Again, it is a uh, cash only. Cold drinks and Booza. They've got beers, Cokes. Peach juice, apple juice, strawberry juice, imported ale. I'm gonna grab me, I am going to grab me a, uh, a beer. I'm gonna get back to you. Yeah, Booza Bar is exactly as described. Not Buzz Bar, this is Booza Bar. I went to Buzz Bar last night and had a uh, Caribbean, Caribbean cruise cocktail. But this is Booza Bar. Look at the views here. It is a cash only establishment. It's a little higher because it can be, but like there's the city. They actually punched a hole in the city wall and built a bar on the cliff side, which is just insane that someone would do that. And it's completely dead. There's literally one other group of people here. There's some people leaving now. These are the gems you find when you come in February. Well, <laughs> it's a leap day today. So when you come in February to Dubrovnik, Croatia. Uh, I'm going to head back to the hotel now, take a nap, and then we're going to be doing an optional excursion this evening, which I will bring you along with, which is we're going to go out to the southernmost point in Croatia and have, it should have been a lunch, but we're going to have a dinner out there and some liquor tasting. I'm excited. See you at, uh, it's now 1.14, 3.30 is when that is. So I'll see you then. Kind of weird in this little town, they uh, post when people die. So these are the uh, different dead people here. Again, we're just kind of going around this town. It's like a tiny version of uh, Dubrovnik, if that makes sense. A super duper tiny version right here. Um, and we're going around. Nothing insane so far, but I'll get you some information from the guide in the minutes so you can hear along. I looked at my dad. You know, I was a girl in a family, but equal to others. I said, come on, dad, what was that? And then he said, but Lydia, that's how they do in the ages. Definitely like that, you know, 80, maybe four or five, I don't remember exactly. And then the war happened in 1991. That family, because they all became refugees, mm -hmm. they came to us. My dad, they were, look, those, those were people who in their chimneys were keeping our prosciutto. So we, we just got them in. My granny was a person born in 1908 with education in the town. They all came, they were all, all of these children calling her, Granny, this, why don't you give me that, Granny? And I said, come on, Granny, they tell you, Granny, you're a lady from a town. Well, is that normal, 1991? And she said, Lydia, they're from the countryside, from a village, and I am an old woman. For them, I'm a Granny. Any of them is a Granny. That's how much we were different then. It moved away. But please, 
Don't laugh now. Women will understand. I'm not 50 yet, but look, a generation that graduated, then through the war, one of my friends didn't go studying. She married here into a certain family. She still, now when we have cell phones, mm -hmm. has to sit in the afternoon with her mother-in-law and her father-in-law sister, because in the afternoon they pray. They sit quietly. And then we have this group, you know, WhatsApp group, ch -ch -ch chatting, telling jokes and everything. And Paulina sometimes smiles and she tells us. And then one of them says, Paulina, don't smile, pray. <laughs> we are in the 21st century. So that there is a lot of beautiful things about it. We love it. I like it. But I just wanted to tell you that it's not Balkans the way you would think. Definitely we were way more ahead compared to Serbia, Bulgaria, Albania. But still, it's a part of mentality that the countryside can. But because of that, they preserve the culture that we would like to show you today. Mm. So this is a cute little sleepy town, the town at the end of the Croatian coast. Pretty much uh, anything south of there is just uninhabited land. Um, it says they're known for their seafood restaurants, but we're not going to be eating here tonight. Uh, I don't really love seafood either way, but... Um, yeah, look at the look at the blue water. I don't think we've seen water that blue so far. Yes, I know it's just about what it's reflecting off and other things like that, but just take a look at the blue water there. It's really cool in this little town. Just how blue the water really is. Get you some more commentary from the guide in just a minute. Are digging and working there. But there is a long street behind, almost like in the old town. Remember, from the main street, you were able to see the stairs uphill. That's what they copied here. Homes and houses there, and the shops were in the central part. So I would love just to walk a little bit with you, but before we do that, we can see this side. This is where they train. This is for the kids that actually play water polo. There is one of the goals outside. You can see the floating elements and the rope just at the side of the scooter, on the floor, outside. So this is where they train and it's lovely because it's out of the season period and you can still see a bit how they really live here. So we'll just take a bit of stroll by shore. Not too long. I'm just going to show something there and then we'll show you. And because we're going to that farm. All right, and now we are leaving the bus behind. That's the road the bus can come down. The bus can't come down this road because I think it's going to get that pretty rough pretty quick the bus is actually going out of its way to turn around but we're walking into this village which is the uh, one of the southernmost villages in Croatia and there's actually there's actually some pretty damn good smells coming from here I'm not gonna lie I'm hoping that's dinner um, for 85 euros it better friggin be dinner uh, I think there's a jasmine here so rosemary, rosemary. The rosemary plant. Yeah, it smells like smell rosemary. It? <laughs> it does smell like rosemary. Cool. But uh, we are walking down the hill to this um, food place of some sort. Ah, here we go. Here we go. So, agro-tourism. <laughs> it's how you run a tax-free business in most countries. <laughs> you run your business, agriculture, tourism. Oh look, they're growing lettuce. In this climate, they're growing lettuce. That's actually kind of impressive, but there's rosemary and lettuce all over. So uh, we're gonna head down this way. See you at dinner, hopefully. There is, they would put on the rope, that, well, all of the clothes they were wearing. It sounds strange, I tell you, I come from the town. I met a lady the other day at the bus stop with her little grandchild, talking to her. You know what she said? She's a, she may be 70, 71 or two. My mom is older than that, but I come from a different family. She said, she, she explained to me, she came from the area, not this countryside, it's the western literal. But she said, my husband was so kind to me, she said, he bought me, when we got married, he bought me my first civilian clothes. She was actually explaining she was not wearing the national costume anymore. Different mm. fabrics from a factory, civilian clothes. And she said how her mother-in-law was against that idea, you know, and all of that. In the 60s, people had, even here, very different lives. 
So for them, this mulberry tree was amazingly important to feed all of that and get uh, the silk. And that kind of a carrot you find in Italy as well. They were growing their own wheat. And when they had a harvest, they would put all of that cut wheat together on that kind of terrace and donkeys were walking on the top of it. In a way they were separating seed that were the seed was of course in the end falling to the ground. They would take the rest of it as a hay to feed the animal and then collect the seeds. Just what they needed to make bread. So this is a real traditional house, the whole house where we go to very traditional. Oh, there's the doggy. It's a big old German Shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody home? Yes, no. there they are. They will come now. Anybody home? Hello. 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 This is your wonderful host, Martha. Matthew. Hello. Okay. It's raining. It's raining, yes, it is. It's raining. We will have a short visit to our garden for a few minutes and then we will go in, inside. Okay. Thank you. His wife won't mind. So, welcome to my family house and my family farm. Uh, my family lives here for at least 500 years wow. and that's not only for my family uh, it's also uh, for majority of people in this small area called Konale from the town that you visited before coming here to border with Montenegro around 80 percent of the families are here for at least 500 years uh, it's a farm and we are farmers so let's go and visit our garden so, there are a few small steps on the way, so please be careful and not to slippery because of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at the squash. Please don't lean on the uh, fence because I'm not sure it's strong enough so to carry the weight. Uh, this is just one of the gardens that we have and it's a garden that is closest to the house and the garden that we use for growing vegetables mainly. Uh, we already prepared the soil for the next season and besides shallots over there and some parsley in front of us, we or, already planted some potatoes here on the right hand side. Uh, we always mix veggies with different kinds of fruits or trees uh, because we, during the summer here it gets uh, pretty hot and uh, we use a shade to protect our veggies. And another reason uh, is the fact that my father is not very optimistic uh, regarding my involvement in, in the farm and farming. So he thinks if he grows olives, because these are very young olive trees, uh, he will somehow use the land, you know, after he will not be able to uh, farm. Uh, because the olives are, you know, very resistant, easy to grow and actually you know, you can even abandon them for decades and come back, you will have olives uh, from the tree. Uh, right now, around 40 different types of veggies and fruits uh, growing in the garden from tangerines to kiwis and avocados and lemons and oranges and kumquats and uh, 
pomegranate and uh, Japanese lot want to buy you guys and uh, uh, that's about trees, hazelnuts, walnuts, almonds, different kinds of figs, grapes are growing all around. Uh, I already mentioned olive trees and uh, parsley, rosemary, peppers, different kinds of peppers, lettuce, uh, rocket, uh, shallots, some strawberries, different kinds of strawberries. Wow. Uh, everything that we need for our daily uh, consumption and uh, our regular yeah. uh -oh. I think we should go to the house. Inside, yeah. <laughs> it's a moment. Yeah. <laughs> so right now, are you importing a lot of stuff because it's not season? Uh, actually, no. Many things are, you know, uh, stored and uh, pickled and... Uh, so a lot of what we're yeah. going to have tonight came from the farm? Yes. We are, let's say... 70 to 80 percent self-sustainable okay regarding food and also energy we have already. energy yes oh you'll explain that you make your own power yeah wow so this is not on grid no it is on grid uh during days like this but during the oh you have solar day, okay yeah, solar okay power. so they taught me that the uh, the dining room here is actually the, uh, the whole thing is off grid not on days like today uh but we've got a whole nice little House set up in here. And wine. So much wine. It's a nice setup. I do have to say, this is a nice setup. I'm impressed with the setup. Uh, this is chili, herbal, and just plain. This is the base for everything. So these ones are a lot stronger than these ones right here. Really? The lighter ones are stronger than the darker ones? Yes. The, these ones are very sweet. These ones are. Very just like pure at home. Uh, Moonshine. More or less, yeah. Moonshine. Moonshine. Oh, I want to try all six. Let's do it. Put the tray over here. So they gave us uh, these things, which. What are they? What Have we figured out what this is yet? Oh, it's like a jelly. I don't know about that one. Okay, so that's like jelly. No, that's like a jelly with nuts. Mm. Oh, they're not messing around with the pores here either. I'm gonna get me some. I'll let you know how it is. So I had some uh, brandy and some wine that they actually make here. I don't really like red wine. I don't really like red wine. But that is a delicious red wine right there. Uh, I don't know, just because it's kind of made here. It tastes like no chemicals. Uh, it tastes like alcoholic green juice. And then we've got uh, two different types of bread, which is a homemade bread here. Let's see what we got here. Mm. Mm. Well, he's your ex husband, so you don't collect it. Mm. What about your kids? I did. Okay. Look how it's springy. That's good, bread. You've been married for over 10 years. You never read it. That's a really good bread, actually. So it looks like we got our actual appetizer now. I got the. Uh, spicy brandy but we got some prosciutto and some cheese and some sun dried tomatoes and some olives and some garlic maybe um this is the spicy brandy because she's a fine girl what a good wife should be oh i had the spicy brandy yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> yeah. Thank you. And look, we have the eighth wonder of the European world. Do you see what's on the bottom of that? It's called ice. You never see that in Europe. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we've got some... Uh, 
prosciutta, some cheese, some olives, and uh, some wine. It's all been really good so far. Um, I might taste it on another camera and insert that here, or you might have to watch the short to see it. So next up, we've got some veal. So this is veal, actually, um, and some potatoes, and it's cooked. Ooh, ooh, that fogged up the camera. It's still so hot. Cooked in like a little iron dome, like the Game of Thrones iron dome. Cooked in a little iron dome in a barbecue. Um, is it better than the other place? About the same? No? Okay. So we went to this place called Ethnoland that was included when we went to the Kurka National Forest on day three. Mm. It's good. Oh, they saw it was a big boy. I had a potato. Let's try. Let's try some. This is veal. Oh. Veal's baby cow, right? What with veal is? Okay. Yeah. I'm, they call it an uncultured swine. Um, I don't use utensils. I, I medieval times it. I don't know. When you're in a place that looks like this, you go back to medieval times. My mom would be so ashamed to be racist. Why are you eating with your hands? I go, because it's medieval times. Um, but they, give me, they did give me something I'm intolerant of. That's salad. Some people, I'm salad intolerant. I don't eat salad. I gave it up for Lent uh, 36 years ago. So. I'm, 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 I just don't eat salad. Because in America, salad's the most dangerous food to eat. Because of E. coli and the lettuce. Not everywhere in Europe. I don't eat very much. But, uh, you know, that was good. And I hope, I think, I know I saw it over there. Sorry. I think we're going to have dessert. How do I know that? Because it's literally right over there. It's behind the counter. I already saw that. I don't know what it is. It's a pie of some sort. But this was good. I'm finishing on my own. I'll see you back for dessert. All right, and last but not least here, we have lavender cake. Yes, I still have wine to drink. I'll get there. But how does lavender cake taste? I don't know if I took a picture of it here. I don't think I did. A lavender cake. Okay, so we, we saw some lavender outside. The question is, how does the lavender cake itself? I think the icing has done it. I dropped my lavender cake. That lavender cake's pretty good. Problem is, there's still wine. And if you know me, yeah, it's in my bag. Yeah, it's here. I blew a point oh six a minute ago. I think we got to go higher. Oh, that's some strong ass wine. And we have one more brandy to try. There's one more brandy to try. Deep in the heart of Texas. All right, so I have to say. That was an excellent dinner, excellent wine, excellent schnapps. That's the schnapps maker, right? The, the, you make that, right? That's his. That's the, the brandy maker, right? You make the brandy. That's the brandy maker. All the wine is now empty, but where, where are we at? That's the real question. Yes, this is the first time I brought out the breathalyzer. There's, oh. Calculating, calculating, calculating. After that Naruto speed run of wine that I did, really? Now, 0 0.08, 0 0.08, five hours and 31 minutes till sober? That can't be. I guess we gotta find more wine. Oh.
It's nine o'clock somewhere. Last time I did this was right before we went into the, um, where's the Pope at? The Vatican. Oh, I had bottles of wine before we went to the Vatican. Uh, can I finish all the wine? I don't know. Let's go. But for 85 bucks, 85 euros, I've had hundreds of euros worth of wine and spirits. So yeah, is this tiny little excursion worth it? I would say it totally is. I have to finish my wine. Oh, this is Richard. Finishing day five of the adventures. Not adventures, by. <laughs> That's Disney's adventures. Escapes by Globus. Polish and Albanian escape. And tomorrow, we're going through not one, but two different immigrations. We're gonna go in the morning into Montenegro. That's water. In the afternoon, it's Albania. So it's Richard. Ooh, one more time. From No Pants Profits, ah. Oh. I know they are, I gotta blow. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hold on. I want to see. Five. Oh, there he is. That's my man who did shots with two, one. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be like one point one at best. It's gonna be bad. No. 0.09. 0.1. Point, point point he called it. I'm gonna I'm gonna hang this up. I'm gonna I'm gonna show him what a real champion does. I'm gonna give him my YouTube channel so he knows. But this is Richard from No Pants Profits reminding you that when you wear no pants, there's only one thing you left to lose, and that is your shirt. Have a great one. Bye. See you tomorrow. Hey. Yes, there. I like uh, totally lost my group. Oh, there they are. I thought I totally lost my group, but no, they're right there. I'm stumbling back. I got to like a point oh nine there. <sighs> great, great, great excursion. Uh, definitely, if you're going on the Escapes by Globus, uh, Croatian Albania. Definitely, yeah. Uh, do that little uh, excursion. I can't remember the name of it. To that little town in the south of Croatia. Uh, go to the family farm. Learn about the family farm. Eat the family farm. Drink at the family farm. And remember that when you wear no pants, there's only one thing you have left to lose, and that is your shirt. Have a great one. Love y'all. See you tomorrow for uh, day six uh, of our Escapes by Globus, Croatia and Albania, where we do two borders, and trust me, I know I speed sped run. Let's do it one more time. I know I sped run that wine. So, we gotta do it one more time. Two. See where we're at. Calculating. 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 Hey, when the alcohol's all you can drink, it's gonna put me at a point oh six. This breath is from like Wish. It kinda sucks. But yeah, if you're in the area, definitely take this out. But for now, I think I am gonna go take a little nap. And I will see you tomorrow. I don't think there's going to be a night tour for night once all that alcohol catches up to me. So, have a great one. Love y'all. See you tomorrow. Bye!